Republicans are upset that Joe Biden pardoned Hunter Biden, but they also voted for a convicted felon who pardoned his buddies while in office. And now we've got to talk politics for a minute because President Biden just broke the internet by announcing he'll be pardoning his son Hunter, who was convicted of multiple crimes. I'll give you all my take on this, which is somewhat nuanced and might surprise some of you, but first let's just go over the facts. In a statement released Sunday night, President Biden said, today I signed a pardon for my son Hunter. From the day I took office, I said I would not interfere with the Justice Department's decision making and I kept my word, even as I have watched my son being selectively and unfairly prosecuted by a Department of Justice controlled by his own side, the Democratic Party, by the way. Biden continued, for my entire career, I have followed a simple principle. Just tell the American people the truth. They'll be fair-minded. Here's the truth. I believe in the justice system, but as I have wrestled with this, I also believe raw politics has infected this process and it led to a miscarriage of justice. And once I made this decision this weekend, there was no sense in delaying it further. I hope Americans will understand why a father and president would come to this decision. So the first problem with this is just Biden's rank hypocrisy. He promised over and over again, I will not pardon Hunter. I'm extremely proud of my son, Hunter, and uh, I am satisfied that I'm not going to do anything. I, sa I said I'd abide by the jury decision, and I will do that, and I will not pardon him. And now here he is, after dropping out of the election and being a lame duck president, pardoning Hunter. So this makes him a liar and a hypocrite just objectively speaking. That's not a great look. It's also entirely fair to point out that Biden has repeatedly juxtaposed himself with Trump as a champion of the rule of law. For example, just in May of 2024, Biden tweeted, no one is above the law. But he just signed a blanket pardon for his son, Hunter Biden, covering all potential crimes he may have committed from 2014 until 2024. So he literally made his son above the law for that entire time period. It is completely fair to call BS here and point out this hypocrisy. Now that said, I do have some mixed feelings about this. For one thing, one of the charges that Hunter Biden was prosecuted for and ultimately convicted for was a felony gun charge that related to him lying on a form when purchasing a firearm, saying he was not a drug user when in fact, he was a drug user. He could have faced years in prison for this offense, but there's a few problems with that that always made that feel wrong and unfair to me. First, I'm not sure I believe in the underlying law. If the Second Amendment is a right, not a privilege, and if you, like me, believe that the right to self-defense is a human right, why people who use drugs should not be able to access it isn't clear. And secondly, millions of people knowingly mark incorrect answers on this form because even marijuana qualifies for that and very few ever get prosecuted for it. However, here's where I lose sympathy for Hunter Biden. Most people don't write memoirs that they sell where they detail their drug use at the exact time they signed forms testifying to the federal government they weren't using drugs. So, Hard to feel too bad for him on that one. And that's why I don't buy Biden's spin that this is a miscarriage of justice. Hunter obviously did do the things he was prosecuted for doing. So it's not a, a miscarriage of justice. And was it politically motivated in some sense? Yeah, maybe in that the Justice Department wanted to show that they weren't just going after Trump because they were biased against Republicans. They'll go after anyone. Look, we're going after Hunter Biden as well. But that doesn't change the fact that he was guilty. So again, not a miscarriage of justice. And it's kind of rich for Biden or the Democrats to complain about political prosecutions, all while they have cheered on some obviously politically motivated cases and prosecutions against Trump, like the one in Brooklyn that ultimately led to Trump's felony convictions. That said, I have some sympathy for the position that Joe Biden is in. If I was a father, I wouldn't want my son to go to jail, potentially for years, 
all over a victimless crime, right? Nobody was harmed because Hunter Biden lied on this gun form years ago, especially if I believed that the only reason he ever got prosecuted for it was because of me being his father, which is true in that if Hunter Biden was just some random dude and wasn't a Biden, he never would have written the book. He never would have had all the political scrutiny and he probably never would have been prosecuted for this. And while I don't necessarily think it's the morally right thing to do, I have to admit to you that I might do the same in Biden's position. I might put family first. Now, one counterpoint I've heard to this from a lot of people online after I tweeted this out is that to be a good father means not bailing your kid out. And part of the reason Hunter Biden ended up such a mess is because Joe constantly bailed him out. And I I can agree with that to a certain extent. And I guess what I'd say in response is that if my child actually harmed someone, you know, sexual assault or robbery or any sort of violence or something like that, I wouldn't pardon them. Even if I had the power to, I would say, no, you have to deal with the consequences of your actions. But when it comes to a victimless paperwork crime, I just, I don't know. I have a lot less sympathy for the notion that any father should let their son go to jail and sit behind bars, see the inside of a prison cell for such a thing. Now, where I lose sympathy for Biden is the fact that he didn't just pardon Hunter for the gun crime or for some of the tax charges he faced. He gave him a blanket pardon on any crimes he may have committed from 2014 to 2024, an entire decade-long get out of jail free car. That's indefensible. Now they'll say, well, he's worried about Trump going after him now that Trump's in, going to be in power and have a Trump Department of Justice going after Hunter Biden. But they can only go after him to the extent that they could get him convicted by a jury of his peers. And if he engaged in actual shady behavior with his business dealings or other things that he was convicted for by a jury of his peers, he shouldn't get carte blanche for an entire decade of potential criminal activity, which which may include stuff with real victims and real harm. That is shady and totally, totally, I think, indefensible. Whereas a more limited pardon or even a commutation of specific offenses that Hunter had committed, I think I could understand much more so. Now, I will point out that there's a fair degree of hypocrisy here. Democrats, of course, all talk about the rule of law and all this stuff, and it's kind of gone out the window, at least for some of them, now that they're defending Biden. But also, Republicans need to remember that when Trump was in office, he pardoned a lot of guilty people as well, including some like Charles Kushner with personal familial connections to him. In fact, he even just gave Charles Kushner, who he pardoned, an ambassadorship. And that's just one example of many where Trump has used his office and kind of blurred the lines between personal relationships and public office or political power. So if you're going to be consistently against that, you do need to be consistent. Now, I want to play a couple funny clips of Democrats twisting themselves into pretzels to defend Biden over this, like Representative Jasmine Crockett, a congresswoman from Texas, who is, of course, a Democrat, who defended this on MSNBC in a truly bizarre interview. Take a listen. Well, I won't pretend to speak for the entire caucus, but I will say way to go, Joe. Um, Let me be the first one to congratulate the president for deciding to do this, because at the end of the day, we know that we have a 34 count convicted felon that is about to walk into the White House. So for anyone that wants to clutch their pearls now because he decided that he was going to pardon his son, I would say take a look in the mirror. Um, because mm-hmm. we also know that when it comes to this cabinet, this cabinet has more people accused of sexual assault than any incoming cabinet probably ever in the history of America. So we are living in unprecedented times, and we know that this was completely political as someone who serves on the oversight committee. Um, this was gangsmanship uh, mm-hmm. the entire time. So there's so much to unpack here. First, this congresswoman is doing a cable news interview from her phone on an airplane and coach while it's boarding, just around other people in the background. What the actual heck is going on here? Imagine being one of those people just moving into your seat in the background and you have this woman yapping about politics and little do you know, she's on cable news broadcasting you without your consent to millions of people. Like, if you're going to be on board a flight when you're supposed to do a hit, you can't make the hit. We can't be doing this. The quality is terrible. It's it's bizarre. And I'm sure you could have found another Democratic backbencher willing to uh, do the hit who wasn't boarding a flight at that time. Like, media 
we got to have some standards. I support the remote hits and how they've become more popular during COVID. They worked out great for me. I could do TV from my home studio, but like we got to keep maintain some standards media. Okay. And then the actual substance of what Jasmine Crockett says here is pathetic. She says it's amazing that Biden is using his political power to let his son off the hook for crimes he absolutely did commit. And her only explanation why is whataboutism, saying Republicans bad, Trump felonies, yada, yada, yada. That is not a defense. Pointing to the other side is not a moral defense for your own actions ever. In fact, you're pointing out your own hypocrisy that you act like it's such a bad thing that Republicans support a felon, that Republicans don't care about the rule of law and about crime and all this stuff. And then you're saying, yeah, we don't care either. See what? Do you not understand that you just exposed yourself on television? Of course, we saw a similarly low IQ take from TikTok stars like Harry Sisson. Take a listen. So let me just get this straight. Republicans are upset that Joe Biden pardoned Hunter Biden but they also voted for a convicted felon who pardoned his buddies while in office. Is that not just hypocritical? Got it. Harry, Google what aboutism and get back to us. Because pointing out the other side's shortcomings is not a moral defense of your own actions. And to the extent it's true that you're highlighting Republican hypocrisy in this video, you're also highlighting your own hypocrisy because you think it's bad when Republicans vote for a felon, like you say, or you think it's bad when Republicans use their office to benefit themselves or their families, as you've criticized Trump for many times. But here you are saying it's amazing, as you did in your other video, and praising Biden for doing the exact same thing. You literally just broadcast your own hypocrisy in 4K. And while some of them may be hypocrites, it's not unreasonable for Republicans to be upset that Biden is pardoning Hunter because Biden repeatedly promised over and over again, I will not pardon Hunter and then did it anyway. He lied to the American people. And yet here you are shamelessly shilling for that because you are a partisan activist and shill, not an independent commentator or trustworthy analyst. It will never cease to amaze me how folks like Harry can set up their tripod, record themselves, edit and post a little video like this and go through this whole process thinking they just dropped absolute bars and not realize that they actually just exposed themselves in 4K. Anyway, guys, my take on this whole Hunter Biden situation is kind of complicated, but I think what Biden ended up doing here with how broad it is and him having promised over and over again that he wouldn't is deeply hypocritical and dishonest and unjustifiable. But like I said, I do have some sympathy that the charges against Hunter Biden aren't all legitimate or shouldn't all be criminalized against him. And I do have sympathy for the role of a father in this situation, wanting to spare your son from seeing the inside of a prison cell for victimless offenses. That said, it will never cease to amaze me how shamelessly hypocritical partisan commentators on both sides can be when it comes to these kinds of issues. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and do hit that like button while you're at it. Uh, yeah.